And they are examples of Gnosticism. I mean, they were actually used in ways to talk about the mystical side. So these are not so much about necessarily the body part again, representing God, I hurt my hand, but rather they're much more about lending an ear, being wise, listening to people. And so they were used by the Gnostics, and there's examples of these. Apparently in Egypt, of course, there were always talisman and amulets that were part of the Egyptian tombs. People had good luck charms and things to protect them from evil. So coming out of that tradition, very early Christians in the Egyptian area were also making a lot of ropes. I also think it's very interesting to look at the, how the characters are depicted. And the center one is kind of Greco-Roman. It almost reminded me of a, a fountain you might see. You know? So again, I really love these. They kind of remind me of the Fayum portraits, the great um, cachet of portraits that were found in the 300 out of Egypt, where when you get to look at these portraits, which were put as part of the sarcophagi on the mummies, you get to see the earrings of the day and the hairstyle of the day and how they wore their makeup. You know, you learned a lot from the art of the day about the costuming. So I really love these in terms of learning more about how things looked at a particular period. Uh, Syria and Lebanon which couldn't be more timely than right now, right? Um, of course, there's always been Christians in that area as well. And so these are some examples of the Milagros from there. Now what totally shocked me, totally shocked me in my ignorance, is that there's Muslim Milagros. And this I did not know. And so when I was studying up on this, that there are some from Iran. And these have been, uh, again, they're very, very simple ones. Sometimes some of the hands, like the big flat hand there, that is, of course, a Muslim symbol that has to do with a battle that was fought by, I believe, Muhammad's brother. And so when you see the big flat can like that, that's a direct um, reference back to Muhammad. But we also have these milagros, which were attached to different things in the mosque. And I just had no idea that something like that went on. Let me read to you a little bit. Okay. Objects that Iranian pilgrims bring to a holy shrine, occasionally a mosque, when they pray for healing in the Shia religion, not the Sunni religion, but in the Shia branch of Islam. It is believed that imams, which is like their priest, in life emanate supernatural virtue and that this force emanates from their tombs and can benefit supplicants offering such votives at their shrines. So I thought that was very interesting because we often hear that um, especially people are not depicted in the Muslim religions, but obviously there's different branches and different um, uses of these as well. Somehow that made me really happy I mean, you I just you realize we are so the same. And this was just one more, one more affirmation of that sameness right now. And I think we all really need that. And this door in um, Iran, I thought was beautiful. Really beautiful. And here is a design that was made with metal hands and faces that are nailed to completely cover some of the doors of the shrines and the mosques. I thought that was very, very interesting. And this is a picture from Iran also. Now this is a little different. These are not milagros and they are not amulets. 
and they are not talisman. These are from Turkey and Iran, and they are part of wedding jewelry. But I just thought it was interesting how similar they look together. And this is put on the bride, and they are to um, they mean health, wealth, and happiness in several of the tribes where Turkey and Iran meet. But I just thought that was really interesting again. So the people who collect up these, like the uh, man Gerard, who collected so many for the International Folk Art Museum in Santa Fe, New Mexico, had to learn also what was what, even though things could look very similar. This is from India. Again, I didn't know that they had them in India. So something new for me to learn. These are um, Hindu. And so um, they're not Christian. These are done Hindu. And they are often show the whole pantheon of the gods, of the Hindu gods. So they will show all the different gods, and you will put them on different gods for different reasons. Here's some more examples of them. And then interspersed in this particular design is also some amulets of the evil eye as well. So the eyes are an amulet, but the others are Hindu, showing scenes from different Hindu lore, and people would put them as part of the temples. And then this is Sri Lanka. And this makes me really mad. Because last year I was in Sri Lanka and I did not know they had malarkers in Sri Lanka, or I certainly would have tried to get some. Right? So I was very disappointed when I read this and I was like, what? But um, the ones in Sri Lanka, which is really interesting, is they are Buddhist ones. And so this comes from the Singhalese um, part of Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka is both Hindu and Buddhist. And the uh, Singhalese are the Buddhist branch. And the place that they come from is a famous place where I was called Candy. And there's a huge temple there to Buddha. And I'm sure I walked past someone selling these outside the temple. So you can imagine I was really mad at myself. But I love these because after having been there, of course, I recognize you know, the little characters, the certain kind of hat, and someone under an umbrella on another page. And, and so it was really hard um, because we had been right there. Um, the other thing that's really cool is Milagros are now modern as well. So you will find things like diplomas, right? You will find things for businesses. You will now find a lot more cars instead of bicycles in the Milagros. So they have continued to be used and they change uh, just as the needs and the wants and the thanks of people change as well. And um, these are Turkish amulets. So again, these would be sewn inside of your cloak, inside of things, which I think is fascinating. Um, but you can see how you could get these confused, but these are, are again, once the amulets are a way of um, protecting yourself. And so these would be sewn inside of blankets for children or like inside of your cloak. In Pakistan, um, these are amulets, but I was fascinated by these again because of them being made of wood. Remember, you always use what's inexpensive. In a lot of the folk arts, it's whatever is readily available. So in Pakistan, wood is more available, obviously, than metals. And these have a very large hole in the top, enough to put a rope through it. So these are put onto your animals as a way of protecting your animals. And they would be worn around the animal's neck. But I thought they were very beautiful. Okay, we're getting toward the end here, but I did want to um, talk a little bit about here in the United States. If you're interested in Milagros, amulets, talismans, and uh, representations of these things, of course, New Mexico is a wonderful place to go 
and see this in some of the towns that are outlying Santa Fe. But these particular pictures are from New Orleans. And I was in New Orleans last November with my class from COD. And so we did a little bit of looking up some of the areas there that would have um, spiritual and sacred items. So another way that you might see is people leaving the actual item after a healing. So again, remember I talked about way at the beginning you might buy a little leg, and then after you were healed you would come back and leave either a more expensive thing or you might replace that little leg with the actual cast or with the crutches are very, very common. With dog tags, when someone comes back from serving in the military service. So this happened to be a little shrine we were at in New Orleans. And I think that they're quite wonderful in their own way. Of course, we have come now, which I think is great, is we have loosened up our ideas a little bit, I think, of altar. We have loosened up our ideas a little bit of of memorial and so we might see after a mass killing like happened so sadly this weekend in Oregon Community College you might see people leave flowers and items and things for the people or of those people who've passed and I'm sure some of you had the experience of going to the Vietnam Memorial in Washington DC and how moving it is to see what people leave at that great wall for in, um, in context of the soldiers who lost their lives in Vietnam. So I think this has become more common, where we are less shy about 